Well, you know, when you're towing a trailer, when you're towing a trailer like this, you have to really like driving. And uh, I've been driving six hours to get up where I am now. I'm up in New York State in the Adirondacks. Again, I love it up here. And uh, a Subaru Outback is a good car for touring. Uh, it, it's kind of like driving a sofa. It's not sporty at all. But it, uh, it sure does the job, and I averaged uh, 22 miles a gallon on the way up here. It's mostly uphill, and uh, I'm pretty happy. The car is a good car. The main thing that I would look for in a tow vehicle is ground clearance. This one has uh, 8.75 inches of ground clearance when it's loaded. It measures out about eight and a half, and uh, it tows well. You know, it tows the trailer. My trailer is 1,500 pounds. And the Outback does a really sweet job of towing it. Uh, when I unhitch the trailer, I get like uh, 36 miles to the gallon on the highway if I'm doing a reasonable speed. So on these roads, uh, you want to uh, turn off traction control when you get on these roads. You want to let the four-wheel drive take over on the Outback. Uh, boondocking sites in the Adirondacks. There's no reservations. You just take your luck, take your chances, and uh, it's pot luck. If the site is occupied, I'll have to find somewhere else. And uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but you always get an adventure. If this one's taken, I'll have to travel uh, about an hour to the next spot that I'm thinking of. what happens when you post an exact spot on the internet tons of people come here and it's no longer available I'm here's the other campsite one two three trailers in there some of these are hunting clubs too uh, some of these places uh, hunting clubs come up here and use the land so uh, either way I'm gonna push on to another place Really challenged to get into these places. All right. All right, great. First two places were occupied, this one's not, and what a million dollar view this is. Well, I certainly lucked out on the campsite. Pulled in here last night, got down into the, uh, the low 30s overnight temperature, but I had the heat running, so it was pretty comfy. I just thought I'd mention, uh, as I'm packing to leave, I typically don't load the trailer up uh, with a lot of stuff. I have uh, four solar panels in here. Uh, the, uh, there's a fifth one under the mattress, but um, I, I keep the weight light in here because it increases the tongue weight. That's how much the weight uh, presses down on the car. Um, this trailer, my setup, the way I have it loaded with the tongue box and the weight that I carry in the trailer, I'm at the maximum 
tongue weight that this car suspension can handle. That's the weight pressing down on the chassis. And you know, it's not good to exceed that. You'll see cars on the road, you know, with uh, bouncing down the road with the fenders overlapping the wheels. You can see they're tremendously overloaded. That's an unsafe condition that uh, should not take place. The cars are overloaded. I see it on, the, <laughs> on many videos. You can see it on the highway when you go for a drive. Somebody driving an overloaded suspension. That's not good for the car. It's not good for stability or safety, etc. So uh, I can carry, you know, a little more weight in here. I could put in the, uh, the kayak if I wanted, but I also have to consider how this stuff bounces around when I'm going down these dirt roads. And uh, I, I typically, this is how I normally travel. There is gear in the trailer, you know, pots and pans and uh, electronics and stuff. And uh, um, that's all fine. Uh, I've actually weighed all this out. I've uh, you know, used the trailer jack and put it on a scale and weighed it. I weighed the entire uh, trailer loaded with water on a, uh, a truck scale. And uh, I'm, I'm within a tolerance of everything. And that uh, is important because I've had this thing up to, uh, <laughs> as a test once, I took it up to 90 miles an hour when nobody was around. But, uh, you know, uh, that's dangerous. You don't want to do that. You know, that thing behind you can uh, get out of control. But it's rock stable. This trailer is rock stable towing. Uh, that doesn't mean you can be a jerk. You still have to be very cautious changing lanes and stuff, uh, allowing yourself adequate stopping room, even with the, uh, the trailer brakes. So when you tow, you just want to be sane and you want to abide by the rules because uh, those rules are there for your safety. And uh, this trailer is compliant. So is my car, it's a match system. So back on the rear end, I stow everything uh, for travel that needs to be secured. I close these, uh, I, I close these sliders so these drawers won't slide out. Everything in these drawers, uh, everything is going to be quite a mess when I get to the next place. It's shaken up. I'm used to what I have dividers in there, and uh, it's not a problem for me. I, um, this refrigerator draws air from the behind the refrigerator and blows it out here on this grill So I make sure I have adequate breathing space uh, around the refrigerator and uh, rather than close this off I um, Usually drive something like that that will keep the drawer of the refrigerator in and it will still allow it to breathe so I'm pretty much ready to go here. You know, when I get to the next stop, if it's a bumpy road, these cups will be all over the place. So maybe I'll just put them in the, uh, in the sink and let them bounce around. They don't really care about that. Uh, but I, I just, you know, based on experience, you want everything secure. It's all going to get bounced around on these dirt roads off to the next place. They're predicting rain for the next few days, so I've got to decide what I'm going to do. I know this stuff is going to move around quite a bit, so I pack it accordingly. And I put uh, delicate gear where it uh, is going to be in a pretty safe location. And uh, uh, this trip, you know, for uh, I had to bring two types of clothing. I had to bring one large tub of summer clothing and one large tub of uh, winter clothing. So, um, you know, because uh, very changeable weather here. <laughs> Looks like I'm not going to need any of the summer clothing. I could have left that home. It's been, uh, the highs have been in the 40s and the lows have been in the low 30s. So, uh, but everything is secure. You know, I also want to keep in mind if I make an emergency stop, what's going to fly forward and hit me in the back of the head. And uh, I keep that in mind too. Gear that's very sensitive, like the ukulele, the laptop, the camera gear, uh, maybe some of the audio equipment, that all goes up in front here, right, and keep an eye on it. Uh, this stuff is pretty hard to protect. Water I try and carry behind the, uh, the front seat because uh, water is heavy, and I want that towards the center of the car so the car is stable when I travel. And I want the lightest gear behind the wheels. Behind the back wheels is where you want the lightest gear if you can do that. Uh, the heaviest gear should be between the four wheels if you can make it work. After three days of steady rain, it's been, uh, the, uh, the roads out are pretty, uh, the roads out of this campsite are pretty, uh, mucky. I think it had like 60 hours of straight rain. <laughs>
Chris and Leslie. I bumped into them out here in the middle of nowhere in the Adirondacks, and they're both smiling, and this is... Uh, Finley. Uh, Finley. Finley. Yeah, and Finley. Uh, Hi, Finley. Yeah. And uh, how long have you been here? We oh. came Friday. Friday. Yeah. How long do you plan on staying? Tomorrow we're leaving. Just oh, okay. Get grounded, get balanced. And that's an A-liner, right? It's actually a Jayco. Jayco, okay, well, they're, yeah, they're very nice, yeah. They only yeah. made them for one year. Oh. The Jaycos. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect for us, for the three of us. Yep. Very nice. I don't think anybody makes anything anymore. I think they put their name on somebody else's oh, product right, now. Yeah, it's all you know. one big conglomerate, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> we're supposed to get rain the next couple of days, right? Yeah, I think sometime yeah. tonight it's supposed to start. Right? Yeah, well, I'm going to tough it out. Yeah. I got a clam shelter and I got the little, uh, you know, the little vestibule, right. so. Yes, we enjoy watching you on YouTube. Oh, okay. You because you had the built-on front part. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Yeah. So okay. You by and you're like, we, we know him. Okay, well, very good, good. Well, you enjoy your stay. And yeah, you Finley, you just, ha you just have a great day, Finley, okay? This doesn't get any better than this for no, a dog, he's does it? his best life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm heading for Old Forge. I need to resupply. I need more food. And if there's an opportunity to get more water, I'll get more water. A lot of down leaves here, very slippery. I had to switch into uh, X mode on the uh, on the four wheel drive on the uh, Outback, and it really did work. <laughs> it uh, it got me up uh, some pretty steep uh, stuff uh, with good traction. It's amazing. I bought traction pads in case I get stuck, but. Uh, I hope I don't have to use them because if, uh, I'm not looking forward to that.